Hello everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over Les Chatelier's principle homework number two. So, let's get started. For question one, it says, in the equilibrium reaction for the formation of ammonia, we have nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas reacting to create ammonia gas as well as energy. Predict the direction of the equilibrium shift. For A, we want to know the direction of our equilibrium if we add nitrogen. For me, the best way to look at these problems is through the use of a scale. Let's see how we're changing our reaction. We are adding nitrogen, so that means we're going to be adding to our reactants. So for adding to our reactants, my scale is going to shift to the right, so my equilibrium will shift to the right. For B, we're going to be removing hydrogen gas. We're going to be removing some of our reactants, lowering that side of our seesaw, sending our reaction towards our reactants, or our equilibrium to the left. What happens when ammonia is added? Well, we're going to be adding to our products. Our equilibrium will shift towards our reactants, sending our equilibrium to the left. Now, if we remove ammonia, we're going to be lowering our products. Our seesaw is going to shift towards our products, sending our equilibrium to the right. What happens when we add a catalyst? Well, our catalyst only lowers or raises our activation energy. In this case, if we add a catalyst, it's not going to shift our equilibrium anywhere. It'll have no change. If we decrease our pressure, we are lowering our number of collisions. On our reactants, we have one mole of nitrogen gas and three moles of hydrogen gas to make two moles of ammonia gas. We have more moles on our reactants. So if we decrease our pressure, we're going to lower our collisions. It'll send our equilibrium to the left. Lastly, if we increase our temperature, energy is on our product side, so we're going to be increasing our products, it's going to send our equilibrium towards our reactants, shifting our equilibrium to the left. For two, we're given the equilibrium reaction between water vapor, carbon monoxide, to produce hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas. What happens when we add water vapor? We are increasing the number of our reactants. We're going to send our reaction towards our products, sending our equilibrium to the right. If we remove water, we're going to lower the amount of reactants we have. It's going to lower our reactant side on the seesaw. It's going to send our reaction towards our reactants, shifting our equilibrium to the left. If we add carbon monoxide, we're going to be increasing the number of reactants, sending our reaction towards our products, and our equilibrium to the right. If we remove carbon monoxide, we are lowering our reactants. Our seesaw is going to shift towards our reactants, sending our equilibrium to the left. If we add hydrogen gas, we're going to be adding towards our products, raising that side of our seesaw, sending it towards our reactants, shifting our equilibrium to the left. If we remove hydrogen gas, we're going to be removing our products, our seesaw is going to shift towards our products, sending our equilibrium to the right. Lastly, what happens when we increase our pressure? Let's look at how many moles we have on each side. For our reactants, we have one mole of water vapor and one mole of carbon monoxide. And on our products, we have one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of carbon dioxide. We have two moles on each side. So regardless of whether we change our pressure, the number of collisions are going to stay the same. Increasing the pressure is going to have no change. For three, we're given the decomposition reaction between nitrogen monoxide into nitrogen gas and oxygen gas and releasing energy. What happens when we increase our pressure? Again, which side has more molecules and which one would benefit from greater collisions? I have the same amount of moles on my products than I do on my reactants. So if I increase the pressure, there would be no change in my equilibrium. If I add energy, energy is on my product side. So I'm going to be increasing my number of products. It's going to shift my reaction to the left, towards my reactant. To see what happens when we change our volume, let's look at, again, how many moles of each one we have. We have two moles on our reactants and two moles in total on our products. If we increase our volume, we're going to have no change. Lastly, if we place it in an ice bath, we're going to lower our temperature, lowering the amount of energy in our system. 
So it's going to shift our equilibrium to the right towards our products. For our next reaction, we are working with nitrogen gas, chlorine gas to form nitrogen trichloride. To see what happens when we change our pressure, let's see how many moles we have of our reactants and our products. For our reactants, we have four moles in total. For our products, we have two moles in total. Which one would benefit the most from an increase in pressure? Our reactants. More moles means more collision. So if we increase our pressure, it's going to shift our reaction towards the right. We're going to increase our collisions, therefore making more of our product. If we add more energy, energy is on our reactant side, so it's going to shift our equilibrium towards our products. It'll shift it to the right. If we increase our volume, we can increase the number of moles that we have in our system. We have four moles in our reactants versus two moles in our products. So if we increase our volume, we can hold more molecules. It'll shift our reaction towards the left. Lastly, if we place it in an ice bath, we are lowering the energy in our system, shifting our reaction towards our reactants to the left. For number five, we have the reaction between nitric oxide and bromine gas to create nitroso bromide. We need to suggest six ways to increase our concentration of nitroso bromide. We need to shift our reaction towards our products. First thing that comes to mind is I can increase my nitric oxide concentration. If I increase the concentration of my reactants, then I can shift my concentration towards my products. With that same idea, I can increase my bromine concentration to create more products. Taking it a look on my product side, if I decrease my concentration of nitrosyl bromide, I am lowering that concentration. I'm going to shift my reaction to make more nitrosyl bromide. Again, looking at my reactants, if I increase my temperature, I'm adding more energy to my reactants. It's going to shift towards my products. Now let's look at some other changes that we can make based on the number of moles that we have on our reactants versus our products. On my reactants, I have three moles in total versus on my products, I only have two. So if I decrease my volume, I'm going to force these three moles to become two to take up that less space available. Lastly, if I increase my pressure, I'm increasing the number of collision between my reactants. I have more moles in my reactants, so more pressure means more collisions, meaning more of my product. For six, we are asked to consider the following solution reaction, which was done in the lab. We have iron three ions with thiocyanate to form iron thiocyanate. We need to suggest five chemicals to increase our concentration of iron thiocyanate. This one is based off a handout that is in the Morgan Kim website for our Le Chatelier's lab. So you can go ahead and pull it up and look at the list of reagents that are presented there. We're going to reference those to see how we can increase our production of iron thiocyanate. Looking at my list of reagents, the first one that comes to mind that can help increase that production is potassium thiocyanate. Now you might be wondering why. Well, when we break it down into its ions, we're going to get a potassium ion as well as thiocyanate ion. If we increase the amount of thiocyanate ions we have, we're going to send our reaction towards our products. We're going to increase our concentration of iron thiocyanate. With that same idea, we can also add sodium thiocyanate as well as ammonium thiocyanate as those ions will also produce more thiocyanate ions respectively. Which other ones can we use? We can also use iron 3 chloride as when that one breaks down into its ions, we're going to get iron 3 and 3 chlorine ion. Same ions from our reaction, increasing the number of reactants, so we're going to increase the number of our products. We can also add iron 3 nitrate as those ions will break down into iron 3 plus and nitrate ions. The more iron 3 ions we have, the more of our iron thiocyanate that we can make. Now we need to come up with five chemicals that will decrease the concentration of iron thiocyanate. Looking at the list, it might not seem clear in the beginning, the chemical that comes to my mind first is sodium chloride. Because when it dissociates, I'm going to get a chlorine ion. And again, all of these reactants are in aqueous solution. So we're going to have iron 3 plus 
in that solution. My iron 3 plus and my Cl minus will react to form iron 3 chloride. If I am taking away my iron 3 plus concentration to form something else, I am decreasing the amount that I can make of my iron thiocyanate. With that same idea, I can also use calcium chloride as when that one dissociates, it will create the calcium ion and chlorine ions, which will in turn make more iron chlorine ions, decreasing my iron concentration. Using what I know about my families, I can also say potassium bromine will have the same effect as the bromine ion will react with my iron ions present in my solution to make iron bromide, ultimately decreasing the concentration of iron that I have. Let's talk about the lesser that could decrease our concentration of iron thiocyanate. If I add sodium hydroxide, when it dissociates, I'm gonna have sodium and my hydroxide ions. The hydroxide will react with the iron ions that are already in solution to create iron three hydroxide. Again, I am lowering the amount of iron ions present in my solution therefore decreasing my concentration of iron thiocyanate. Lastly, I can add ammonium nitrate as when it dissociates, I'm gonna get ammonia and nitrate. My iron is going to react with my nitrate and form iron three nitrate. And that's it. If you have any questions, don't forget to message myself or Mr. Morgan on Schoology. Other than that, stay safe and I'll catch y'all next time.